Hello everybody and we are so glad that you could join us today. We are up for a very interesting discussion and we are glad that you can connect with us from wherever you are. In a short while, we will begin our program.
while we are waiting for people to log in uh, in our live streaming, may I remind everyone to please fill up our attendance form. And also, I would like to share to everyone that this Okay, so while waiting for Sir John, I think he's having a technical problem on his side. So uh, we are actually live in FB, live streaming. So if you have friends, um, please do check out our uh, FB page. We are live streaming in FB. For the newcomers, kindly click the link for the attendance form for documentation purposes. Thank you. Again, thank you for joining us today. We, uh, we hope that you are all safe and well from wherever you are right now. Before we begin, here are some reminders before our program. This webinar will be recorded. Please keep your mic on mute unless asked to speak. Please use the chat function for your questions and comments. There will be a dedicated open forum at the end of the presentation. And may we please ask everyone connected here at Zoom to please follow this format for your Zoom name or your profile name. Please write your first name, slash, and then the name of your organization. Help us make this webinar more engaging by reacting to the presentations and the discussion using the Zoom reaction buttons. Please accomplish the attendance form and the webinar feedback form. Thank you very much. Arise Philippines and the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association are conducting a study on the common reasons why businesses refrain from engaging insurance products. We would like to invite you to share your insights and put your input in the insurance subscription survey. Just follow the link, the QR code flashed in your screen right now to access the survey. Oh, and by the way, the survey link and QR code is also available in Arise Philippines FB page and website. Please see the link flash on your screen now. something that you've saved your whole life for and finally was able to buy, say a house, 
and you don't want anything to happen to that house, obviously. You want to protect it against fire, lightning, earthquakes, whatever. All right? But obviously, you can't do it yourself. You're not God. So what do you do? You insure it. And we, that's a role. If something bad happens to that house, we pay the claim so that you can continue with your life. an intangible thing and when you sell an intangible thing it becomes even more difficult one of my most memorable uh, experience in the insurance industry was when I had to pay a claim for a period of five days it was a an explosion worth about worth two million dollars and in three days we had an adjustment on the fifth day we paid the claim Uh, if, you were to, if you were the client to insure your house against fire or earthquake or a typhoon, and a typhoon happened, so you, you probably got your roof blown away or your walls probably crumbled. So what happens? You go to the insurance company, file a claim, and we pay you how much it's going to take you to rebuild the house. Now, if you were a businessman, for example, and uh, you insure your inventory in a warehouse and something happens that you insure it against this time maybe let's call it a flood all right so what happens is all your inventory get washed out so if you don't have insurance you don't know what to do to be able to start that business again right so uh, we pay you we remove all the uncertainties and you're able to start your business again when you see people uh, getting victimized by Yolanda or Ondoy, and then you see how little they have after the disaster, you feel the sense of meaning in paying out claims or in issuing the, the policies for them. The fact that we are supporting the uh, commerce industry by way of indemnification in case of adverse times, uh, that is more than enough to motivate us to stay in this industry. Financial transactions don't usually work without insurance. International trade doesn't work without insurance. You see, they will not issue a letter of credit which you need for international trade if you do not insure your goods. Service-oriented uh, industry and uh, we have to know our customers well and uh, what their needs are. And of course, in a case of a claim, a sense of uh, fairness and trust is very important. Uh, and you, this is something that uh, we have to prove to the client. You know how insurance works? Um, people who face a common peril contribute into a common fund. Now, the insurance company doesn't own that fund. We protect it, we hold it, we manage it for the insurance. See, so we're essentially protecting or holding money that doesn't belong to us. It belongs to you, the client. All right? So we have to be extra careful. Our product is not something that you churn out of the factory. Our product is the policy that is issued, the people that you talk to when you're getting evaluated, for a fire insurance policy, uh, the people that you talk to when you're making a claim, and 100% of the time, you have to transact with people. 
So I would say that it's a must that you have good people for you to survive as a good insurance company. Insurance people usually have different roles. So we have underwriters, we have actuaries, we have marketing people, we have uh, claims people, we have technical people. Almost all walks of life and almost all training and technical backgrounds we have. Uh, there are a lot of issues that we're facing now. One of the most pressing issues, which I feel so passionate about, are the taxes. Do you know that we have the highest taxes in, in the region? And when I talk about the region, I'm talking about ASEAN or even the world. And these are not shouldered by the company, they're shouldered by you, the insurer. So for a long time, we've been lobbying the government to do something about these taxes. Another thing is insurance is a very low penetration rate in the Philippines. There was once a time when people did not know anything about insurance. They thought it was just a racket. But now they see it as a legitimate profession, a legitimate industry. And they see that we have been working wonders as well. The PR committee has helped churn out a lot of articles in the newspapers about the insurance industry. We are also doing the Pira Campus tours. And we're trying to hit two birds with one stone. Number one, to inform the public about insurance. And number two, to fill up the shallow bench in the insurance industry. Everyone wants to go to banking. Not enough people want to go to insurance. So what we're trying to do is try to entice these new graduates, these new students, that hey, there's a career for you in insurance. There's a lot you can do, whether you're a math major, whether you're a palm arts major, whether you're a marketing major, accountant, finance, whatever. There's a role for you in the insurance industry. There is a lot of cooperation right now and uh, unity within the industry. As a member of the association, uh, we, we participate in uh, PRS initiatives uh, regarding uh, safety awareness and other outreach activities with uh, NGOs uh, and as well as uh, microinsurance. So the industry is united at this time. then we are there to service your needs. Okay? We're there to make good your loss. We're there to help you to build your house, help you buy your car, help you put up your business again. That's what we're there for. Well, uh, that surely sparks up the interest for this morning's activity. This event is co-organized by Arise Philippines, the local network of the Global Private Sector Alliance for Disaster Resilient Societies, and Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, or PIRA. This is day one of the two-day session. Imagine a better, more resilient world where nations can bounce forward from disasters. Critical infrastructures stand firm against calamities where businesses and communities can thrive. And basic services are uninterrupted, especially when they need them most. This could be our future if we start working together on disaster risk reduction now. The United Nations adopted the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction in 2015, a bold but brave movement to build resilience in every nation across the globe by minimizing known risks and preventing the creation of new risks. 
to strengthen pre-disaster risk reduction and pre-disaster preparedness to build capacity among communities towards recovery and to save lives and protect businesses and investments. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction has seven global targets. To substantially reduce global disaster mortality and number of people affected globally by 2030. Reduce direct disaster economic loss in relation to global gross domestic product and reduce disaster damage to critical infrastructure and disruption of basic services. Substantially increase the number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by 2020 and enhance international cooperation to developing countries through adequate and sustainable support to complement their national actions for implementation of the framework and substantially increase the availability of and access to multi-hazard early warning systems and disaster risk information and assessments to the people by 2030. To help achieve the targets of the Sendai Framework, the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction set up Arise Global, an international network of private sector volunteers committing support to the cause. Part of this global network is Arise Philippines. Established in 2015, its membership network of companies and private institutions has grown. Focused on the four priorities for action of the Sendai Framework, namely, one, understanding disaster risk. Two, strengthening disaster risk governance to manage disaster risk. Three, investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience. And four, enhancing disaster preparedness for effective response and to build back better in recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The members of Arise Philippines continue to work together towards a shared vision of a more resilient Philippines. Through awareness building, mutual cooperation, and action, Arise aims to contribute to building stable businesses, sustainable communities, and safe and resilient Filipino families. Through continuous action and collaboration with the government and the public, this vision can finally become a reality. Helping communities and businesses bounce forward better for a more resilient Philippines. There's still a lot of work to be done. We will live up to our mandate by undertaking activities under our work themes and priority areas. And with your help, we can go further and build better. Be part of the network. Let us co-create a sustainable and resilient future for all of us. Good morning, everybody, and we are so glad that you can connect with us today. Welcome to the Insurance for Resilience webinar series. This is day one of our two-part series, and we will be focused today on understanding the basics. This event is co-organized by the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association and ARISE Philippines, the local network of the Global Private Sector Alliance for Disaster Resilient Societies. I am your host for today. I am John Arieta from ARISE Philippines. Just a quick reminder to those who just came in, we will be entertaining questions and comments after the presentation. But please feel free to write them down using the chat function here in Zoom. Also, please don't forget to accomplish our attendance form. If you have other concerns, please send a direct message to our secretariat. Now, to formally open our webinar, please welcome the co-chair of Arise Philippines, retired Vice Admiral Alexander P. Pama. Magandang umaga po, sir. Magandang umaga, John. At maraming salamat sa impulsipas ng ating uh, event ng araw. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Morning, yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Arise Philippines Co-Chair, uh, Mr. Hansi, the members of the Board of Directors, 
the other work theme and priority area leads for Rice Philippines, I would like to welcome you all to this very significant and important webinar series initiated and co-conducted by our energetic partner, the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association of the Philippines, or PIRA. Allow me likewise to acknowledge and express our appreciation to our keynote speaker this morning, Attorney Dennis Puna, the Insurance Commissioner, who will be properly introduced later. And thank you for joining us, Mr. Commissioner. I also would like to thank in advance Mr. Mitch Reliosa, our indefatigable tireless partner who will be sharing with us this morning his knowledge and wisdom about insurance, a critical cog in the whole system for an effective disaster risk reduction management strategy for our country. Last August, in collaboration with the National Resilience Council, um, one of our members and our work team lead for disaster risk management strategies of DRRMS, we organized a DRRM knowledge series. This webinar series mostly focused on understanding disaster risks and learning the necessary methodologies, tools, and strategies for effective disaster risk management. This time around, together with our priority area lead for insurance and reinsurance, the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, or PIRA, we are once again working together and living up to our commitment to raise awareness and share knowledge to help our businesses and communities reduce their disaster risks and build their resilience. Arise Global, the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, or UNDRR, recognizes and highlights the vital role insurance and reinsurance plays in building the resilience of businesses and communities. That is why for 2020 to 2023, Arise has included insurance and reinsurance as one of its priority areas, together with investments, small and medium enterprises, and resilient infrastructure. Indeed, businesses, particularly the small and medium enterprises, would be hard pressed to bounce back better if they are not insured for us and for us in the Philippines, a country that has consistently been in the top 10 of the World Risk Index for the past several years makes it an imperative for businesses to be appropriately covered. It is a fact that if we are to build a truly sustainable, inclusive and resilient Philippines, we have to be certain that our business and communities are equipped with the necessary tools to overcome disaster risks. And this include all our efforts at mitigating, preventing disasters, effective disaster response, and a robust rehabilitation and recovery plan. With insurance added to the mix, therefore, we will be well on our way to be more prepared and more recovery ready for any disaster that comes our way. This webinar, therefore, is thus a necessary and timely activity. We hope that you maximize your time with us today and hopefully learn as much as you can from our distinguished speakers. And we hope that after the webinar, we can also share your respective net to your respective networks the important lessons and messages about insurance and how it can be an essential factor in your businesses in building back better if and when disaster strikes and help, help us build our individual and collective disaster resilience. Thank you to our priority lead on insurance and the insurance PIRA, led by Mitch. And we look forward to even more impactful collaborations with you for a disaster resilient Philippines. Maraming salamat po and ingat po tayong lahat talagi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Alex. We appreciate your leadership, sir. This webinar will not be complete if we won't hear from the national government agency who ensures that the insurance industry lives up to the challenge of protecting our businesses and communities. Let me introduce our guest. Prior to his current appointment, our guest was appointed by then President Benigno Aquino III as the Deputy Insurance Commissioner of Legal Services. He served in the government in various capacities during the administration of former President Ramos, 
He was the special assistant to the appointment secretary of the president and director and technical assistant to the chief presidential legal counsel. You know, at the age of 28, he was appointed as the executive director of Videogram Regulatory Board, now known as Optical Media Board. He was the youngest presidential appointee at that time. Our guest served as the national officer of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines for more than 12 years. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Insurance Commission of the Philippines, please welcome Commissioner Dennis Funa. Mr. Alan Santos, PIRA Chairman. Mr. Michael Reliosa, PIRA Executive Director. Distinguished guests and colleagues from the industry, ladies and gentlemen. A wonderful and blessed day to everyone. I am delighted to welcome you to the Insurance on Resilience webinar series organized by the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, or PIRA Incorporated, and Arise Philippines. I hope this event opens up a door of new knowledge and advocacy for our participants. Who of us can forget the previous year? The year 2020 started literally with a blast as the Taal Volcano erupted sometime in January. Within a couple of months, we soon faced one of the greatest challenges of our generation, the COVID-19 pandemic. We thought that was the worst. Well, maybe it is, but before the year was over, our challenges were compounded by a series of severe typhoons that ravaged through our provinces, brought so much anguish because of the loss of lives and livelihood, and severe impact to the economy. These days, we seem to have gotten better at fighting COVID-19. The economy is opening, Classes may soon hold face-to-face -face activities again. Events are being allowed. Life is getting some normalcy. However, our troubles with nature are far from over. Disasters and catastrophes are still expected. A study shared by Glasgow, Glasgow a few days ago says that climate is on track to devastate the world's poorest economies. While some rich countries are said to be committing pledges to fight climate change, we cannot rely on these promises. Unfortunately, the Philippines is prone to so many natural and human-induced hazards and risks. And it is best if we know how to help ourselves. One way of helping ourselves is by getting sufficient insurance, insurance protection from these disasters. After all, this is how many developed countries are able to bounce back after major hazard events. Because in essence, insurance is about being united and pooling resources so that we can have this one machinery to help us get back on our feet, if and when a disaster strikes. Time and again, insurance has been proven to be an effective risk transfer and management tool that communities can count on after severe natural disturbances. Fortunately, various risk management mechanisms are in place or being put in place, which should aid us 
meet our disaster resilience goals. First, we have the parametric insurance product, which today plays a significant role in the market for disaster insurance. Here, the claims adjustment process is eliminated, thus allowing payout money to reach policyholders much faster. Payment can be made in a matter of weeks versus months or years with a standard indemnity contract. Another tool for building resilience is the Philippine Catastrophe Insurance Facility, PCIF, which the Insurance Commission is currently working on with PIRA and NATRE. This PCIF implements a compulsory session of catastrophe risks to a pool-like facility, which then seeds back to subscribing domestic insurance or insurance companies. The PCIF increases the catastrophe resilience of the country's insurance industry and its capacity to retain catastrophe risks and importantly, it can provide the public with more inclusive access to catastrophe insurance protection. So you see, we have means to help ourselves. But like many good things, they can, they can only help us if we use them. But to use them, we need to understand and appreciate them. And that is why we are here, to better understand these concepts as necessary and effective tools for disaster resilience. Let me take this opportunity to thank Arise and PIRA for spearheading this webinar and to all our participants for taking the time to attend and listen. The fight for disaster resilience is a cause we cannot disregard because it is a fight not only for our properties or livelihood in the here and now, but those of our children and the future generation. Thank you, and I hope that this activity will be fruitful and productive for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much to our good commissioner, commissioner, Dennis Funa. Now, let us get into our business for the day. Here to help us understand all there is to know about insurance and how it can help us become more resilient as individuals, businesses, and communities is the former president and CEO and currently consultant of Fortune General Insurance Corporation. Our guest sits on the board of various corporations, notable of which is City State Savings Bank, a listed company where he chairs the trust committee. He also served as the former chairman of the Association of Southeast Asian Nation Insurance Council and is currently their chair for the education committee. Sir Mitch, as he is fondly called by friends and colleagues, entered the insurance industry through Ayala-owned FGU Insurance Company right after completing his degree on economics in Ateneo de Manila. He has been very active in serving the insurance industry through his involvement as, as a regular lecturer at the Insurance Institute for Asia and the Pacific, and he was recently elected to its board for the years 2021 to 2023. Congratulations, sir. The Development Academy of the Philippines engaged him as a research fellow for insurance industry regulatory review on modernizing government regulations. He writes a monthly opinion column for the Manila Times on topics related to insurance, risk management, and other topics close to his heart. Arise Philippines appointed him as the committee chair and priority area lead on reinsurance, which is one of the four key priority areas of the organization. 
My friends, everybody, please help me welcome the Executive Director and Concurrent Chairman for Public Relations of the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, our dear friend, Mr. Michael Surmich Riliosa. Good morning. Salamat, John. Mas mahalo pa natin introduction mo sa paper ko. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Commissioner Funa, uh, Vice Admiral Alex, trustees and officers of Arise Philippines, my colleagues in the insurance industry, I do note a few. Fellow Arise members, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning to everyone. My task today is to introduce risk management and insurance. And ito na nga po, we have to go back to the basics to understand all those that have been mentioned earlier by the commissioner, by Vice Admiral, etc. Um, how does it work? What is risk? What is insurance? We'll try to demystify that for you in a short session today. However, I would need your help. Okay. Uh, let me allow me to share my screen first. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. All right. It's not going into presentation mode. There we go. So actually, I entitled my talk Insurance 101 kasi balik nga po tayo sa basics ng insurance and how it works. But you know, before we get to understand or talk even about insurance, we first would have to wrap around, get our minds wrapped around what risk is all about. Okay? To understand insurance, we have to first understand the concept of risk. Ano ba talaga ang risk? And I would need your help here. So what you can do is you can actually help me by describing a typical morning in your lives. Well, in special, in pangaro-aro na experience nyo. Okay? What do you do when you get up in the morning? How do you prepare for work? How do you get to the office, etc. Things like that. Ikuwento nyo lang po. Maybe you can do that by the chat box and we will get examples from that chat box. Go ahead. Let's start now. What do you do when you get up in the morning? How do you prepare for the day? Do you have breakfast? Do you cook breakfast? Do you drive the car? Do you take the bus? Ano po yung ginagawa nyo? You can probably end your narrative with uh, by the time you get to the office at least. And by the examples that you will be showing, we will pick out the risk areas para maintindihan natin. Ano ba talaga yung risk? Okay? So is there anything in the chat box already? I see some coming in. Okay. Oh, okay. Of course, check my phone. Everybody does that. Okay, right of us to work. Exercise. Oh, may, may oras pa mag-exercise. Okay. Abuti naman. Hindi sa sabi. Take a shower. Obviously, I'm not going to go to work without taking a shower. Do bathroom routine. Uh, hindi na natin tatanungin kung ano pa yung ibang routine sa sa banyo. Now, you might be asking, uh, ano pakialam ng ginagawa ko sa, sa risk? Ito na po yun. Kita niyo ho, risk is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's in everything that we do. You see, ito nga, paggising natin sa umaga, o oh, yun iba, nag-exercise. Eh mamaya, sige, nag-barbells yan, nahulugan ka ng barbell, kawawa naman yung paa mo. Okay? Yun iba, nag-babanyo. Okay, fine. Do you know that 80% of accidents happen within and around the house? 
80%. That's a proven fact. What, what can happen in the bathroom? Maraming aksidente po sa banyo. Pwede ka madulas sa banyo. Uh, pwede ka madulas sa sabon. Alright? You, you can hit your head on the tiles. A lot of accidents happen at home. Okay, some say they uh, have breakfast and obviously you have to have your coffee. And if you don't have your coffee, you have to boil your water first and make your coffee. All right? You have to use LPG gas stoves. LPG tanks in the Philippines are not exactly safe. So LPG tanks can explode. It happens so many times. You can burn yourself with scalding water. Uh, a lot of accidents can happen again in the kitchen. Okay, you have breakfast. Uh, eh, kung mabulunan kayo, baka medyo nagmamadali kayo pa, malilate na kayo sa office, napalaki ko yung subo nyo, nabulunan kayo, you can choke. And if there's nobody else in the house with you who can who is trained to do a Heimlich maneuver, you could die from choking on your food. Okay? Then you go to work, you leave the house, you forgot to lock the door. And if you forgot to lock the door, I mean, uh, robbers can enter your house, right? Or nakalimutan niyo yung stove, eh, magmamadali kayo, naka-on pala yung kalan, pwede masunugan. Marami pwede mangyari. Sakay kayo ng bus. Alam niyo yung mga bus sa Pilipinas, di ba? Hindi pa kayo nakakasakay, aandar na siya. Nakakapit kayo sa estribo ngayon. So that's, again, another source of an accident. If you drive yourselves to work, you know what driving in Manila is like, with or without the traffic. We're not the safest country in the world for driving. So I can go on and on and on with examples of risks. And we're not even through with the day. We just started. Papasok pa lang tayo. Nakabot na kayo sa building nyo. You ride an elevator going up to the 30th floor if you work in a high-rise. What could happen there? So, you know, there were cases where the elevator doors opened, but the elevator car wasn't there. Eh, kung nagbabasa kayo ng dyaryo, nagbabasa kayo ng telefono nyo, nagte-text, or nagme-message sa Facebook, hindi nyo napansin na pumasok kayo sa elevator na wala pala doon. Express kayo ngayon sa baba, sa basement. Okay, so again, they sound ridiculous, but it's there. Risk is everywhere. And we're not even talking about the risks from nature like typhoons, earthquakes, tsunamis, storm surges. You name it, we have it. You know, the Philippines is the most disaster-prone country in the world. Well, actually, there are two other countries that are more disaster-prone. But if you look at the size... The Philippines is the biggest because those island nations are actually small Pacific islands. I think it's Vanuatu or I forgot the other. But the Philippines is the biggest country that's most prone to natural disasters. Look at this. Huh? The Philippines is visited by 22 to 25 typhoons in a year or weather disturbances. And I don't know if you've noticed... But over the years, our typhoons have been getting stronger. Minsan nga, wala pa tayong typhoon. It's the normal habagat. Okay? Pero maybe because of global warming, the moisture in the air is a lot more than it used to be and therefore you get more rainfall and therefore you get more floods or stronger winds. You see... We also, the Philippines is also situated in what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire. And the Pacific Ring of Fire is an area around the Pacific which extends from uh, Japan, Taiwan, down the Philippines, Indonesia, all around until the west coast of the United States, then goes up to Alaska. You see, that Ring of Fire is an area in the world where you have more than the normal seismic activities. And you also see that you also have a lot of volcanoes in those areas. And in this area, that's where the Earth's crust is fractured. So marami tayong earthquake faults. See? 
So there you have so many things that combine to make risk, especially for the Philippines and Filipinos, very pervasive. So, okay, anong gagawin natin ngayon? Nandiyan na si risk. The possibility of something going wrong. Okay, my computer is not working. Ayan na nga yung risk. Okay, what's happening here? Let me... Uh, it froze. Let me stop sharing and I'll try again. Uh huh. It's not working. I'll try another version. Hold on, please. There we go. Now it's moving. Okay, so risk. One thing we have to remember about risk is that it is uncertain when and sometimes where it will strike. But we all know it can happen. Okay, so we gave you already examples of risks earlier. Uh, your house is the risk of catching fire, especially if it's made of wood. Your car has the risk of being bumped by another vehicle every time you drive on Metro Manila streets, especially if the car is maintained. Your cargo, if you're a business owner and you, you're in the business of logistics, your cargo runs the risk of being lost at sea along with the vessel if the vessel encounters bad weather or if the vessel is old, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many examples of risks. The accidents that we mentioned, Kanina, the typhoons, the floods, those are all risks. Now, uh, I'd like you also to differentiate two words when we talk about risks. First is the peril. When we talk about perils, it means the cause of the loss. Ano yung pinagmulan ng loss? The hazard naman is something that increases the likelihood or the severity of a loss. For example... If your house is built of wood, mas combustible to kaysa cemento, di ba? So, a wooden house is more of a hazard. Okay? Another example. If, for example, you uh, use LPG at home <clears throat> or you have a business and your business is to refill LPG tanks near your house, and then that's a greater hazard, right? Because then uh, you have a greater chance of an accident of fire due to your LPG refilling activities. So yung po in hazard. Okay? Now, okay, so uh, there's a lot of risk. It's pervasive. <clears throat> but what do we do? There must be a way that man came up with to handle these risks. They're not old. They've been there for ages, right? So what do we do to handle? Ito po, yung tinatawag natin na risk handling methods. We can avoid the risk. Okay? We can try to reduce or prevent the risk. Or we can choose to retain the risk. Or finally, we can choose or opt to transfer the risk. Isa-isahin po natin to. Okay. I don't want to get sick of COVID. So what do I do? I stay at home. I don't go out. But, you know, you can't do that all the time. You still have to go out and buy your food or buy your meds. You still have to go out and work or go to school. So it's not possible to avoid a risk all the time. 
it's possible sometimes, but you can't use this as the sole method of handling risk. Another is you want to uh, prevent the loss from happening or you try to reduce the likelihood of a loss. So what do you do? Uh, I don't know if you see in your offices, if most of you are in the offices today, if you look at the seating of your office, you might see little metal contraptions there uh, that are peeking through the, the ceiling. I don't have it because I'm at home. But uh, you guys might see those. They're called sprinkler heads. And if a fire occurs, those automatically turn on and it sprinkles you with or, or pours water on, on your rooms or on your offices. So therefore, the fire is arrested. Another is the older way you have fire extinguishers, yung mga tangking pula nakasabit sa mga kanto ng offices, that's another way. If you own a car, ay yung manakawan, so you, your car has an alarm. All right? Or in the old days, I don't know if you've seen this, merong contraption na nilalagay sa mga manibela at saka kinakabit dun sa brakes. It's called a, uh, a steering wheel lock. So those are examples of how to prevent or at least reduce the likelihood of a loss happening or a risk occurring. Another method of handling risk is what we call risk retention. If the risk naman is small enough and hindi ko naman ikamamatay, no? kunyari I bought a pen. Okay, okay, medyo may kamahalan yung pen, pero kung mawala yun or masira yun, I can always buy another pen or hope somebody gives me a pen for Christmas. Okay, so I don't have to go through the trouble of, you know, attaching it to my body with a chain or, or putting a microchip there so that I can find it when I need it. Uh, I don't have to bother. But maybe that method is even more expensive than the pen. So for something small and... Uh, it shouldn't be life-changing. I can choose to retain that risk. And finally, another risk handling method would be what we call risk transfer. And uh, this is how it works. I, if masunogan ako, okay, ano mawawala sa akin? Yung halaga ng bahay ko, or yun, mabangga ako, yung halaga ng kotse ko, etc. Right? Now, um, what I can do for a smaller percentage of that cost, I can transfer the insurance or the risk to an insurance company and that insurance company then worries about the loss, not me. I pay them a premium, which is a small percentage, and he does the worry. If something happens to the car or if something happens to my house, then it's the insurance company who pays for the damage. Gives me the money, I buy another car, or I have my house built again. So it's the insurance company who takes on that risk for you in exchange of the premium or that small amount of money that you pay him to do so. Okay? Okay, it's stuck again. <laughs> Okay, now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is risk management. Okay, risk management is nothing more than a coordinated way of using the risk handling method that we, the methods that we just talked about, right? So there are three steps involved in risk management. The first is we try and identify the risk. What is the risk that we're trying to manage? Is it a fire risk? Is it a liability risk? Is it an accident risk? Is it a health issue? We identify. When we identify also, we don't just see what it is, but we try to measure what are the chances of it happening. Okay? So things like um, how close am I to an earthquake fault? How close am I to the shore? Uh, how close am I to a volcano? 
or uh, what is the building I'm living in constructed of? Is it constructed of uh, concrete or, or reinforced concrete, steel, or timber? Or is it a mixture? So all those come into play when you identify, evaluate, and measure the risk. So the one steps na po, no, identify natin, tapos evaluate natin no, in chances of it happening. And then, Alam na natin kung ano, alam na natin yung chances of it happening. So then we choose kung ano doon sa pinag-usapan natin kanina ang gagamitin natin na risk handling method. Ire-retain ba natin to? Uh, do we try and uh, take steps to avoid the loss? Or do we transfer it? Etc. Okay? So now, Dapat naman natin isipin din na hindi lahat ng risk ay pwedeng i-transfer or i-insure. Right? Hey, guys, let me know if I'm going too fast. Huh? But anyway, uh, what is... Okay, thanks, Sean. What is an insurable risk? There are certain characteristics that a risk should have before it can be transferred or insured. Una-una, the risk must be legal. We cannot insure contraband items. We cannot insure properties in which crimes are being committed or where illegal acts are being done. Uh, we cannot insure something that's against the law. Okay, That's the first. Second is, syempre, dapat in risk may element of uncertainty. Kasi that's how insurance works. Eh. Kung ang risk talagang mangyayari, there are less chances of it being insured. Siyempre, the insurance company is also in it for a as a business. Right? So, um, if for example, you know that the, the building is going to burn, maybe uh, during, during the New Year season, eh, factory kayo ng paputok sa Bulacan, Tapos yung mga building na kung saan ginagawa yung paputok, igawa sa kawayan at pawit, eh talagang mas, it's asking to be burned, right? So for something like that, you cannot insure. Kasi for sure na mangyayari yung gusto niyang i-protect against. So the risk must be uncertain or there should be an element of fortuity yung hindi inaasahan. Now, okay. Sabihin niyo naman sa akin, eh, bakit yung life insurance? Ini-insure natin yung buhay ng tao. Eh, alam naman natin lahat na we're going to die. We just don't know when. But that's it. We don't know when. That is the uncertainty there. We know we're going to die, but we don't know when. Okay, so insurance companies have a way of computing that. Right, so another thing is that the risk must be measurable. We must be able to analyze that risk and the chances of it happening. Not only that, we also have to find out what the size of the risk that we're writing. Okay? We must make sure that the insurance company is able to pay for such a huge risk if it happens. Okay? And... Uh, Related to that, the loss must be of a substantial value. So we don't really insure the small things, right? Like the wall I, I was talking about earlier, we don't insure that. But if you're insuring something of value like your house or your car, yan pwede natin insure. Now, on the other side of the coin, the loss shouldn't be so big naman that we call it catastrophic. That's why we've been talking about catastrophic risks since, since the videos kanina. And what are these? These are the earthquakes. These are the ondoys. These are the uh, um, Yolandas, right? These are catastrophic losses. And when we talk catastrophic losses, we think na malawakan na damage. Now, okay. Technically, these are not insurable. 
Okay, but the insurance industry has found a way to be able to insure these things. But then the insurance for these things are not the normal insurances. Okay, you pay a little extra for this. Uh, example, no, uh, meron kayong um, motor car na comprehensive. Okay, so akala nyo ngayon nasa, uh, nasa Marikina kayo, nasa Provident Village kayo, akala nyo ngayon na yung kotse nyo safe na kasi may comprehensive. Eh, hindi nyo pala alam na dapat on top of the comprehensive cover, may acts of God kayo. Okay, see? So you have to have an acts of God on top of the normal cover. Kasi nga po, catastrophic ang flood catastrophic ang earthquake, etc. See, so you have to make sure that your coverages or the ones that you have now cover those things. Kasi ang insurance po, kontrata yan, which you'll see later, dapat ito nakalista doon kung ano yung mga kinocover niya at ano ang hindi. Kaya napaka-importante po is that you read and understand your policies. And if in doubt, ask. You can ask the company itself. You can ask their agents or if you're using a broker, you can ask your broker. You can ask the insurance commission or you can even ask PIRA. All right? We're there to help you. Okay? So, insurable risks. Anong pwedeng insure? It must be legal, must be uncertain, must be measurable, must be of a substantial value and the opposite, the loss must not be catastrophic. Another example of a catastrophic loss would be war. War is an exclusion in any policy, all right? Because the damage out of war is considered catastrophic itself. So, punta naman po tayo sa, what is insurance? So, we have to define insurance. There are two definitions. We have a technical definition and we have a legal definition. And both are applicable. Okay, so let's start with the technical definition. Ang technical definition, lipat ko lang po yung slide. Okay, technical definition is that insurance is a device under which a group of people who face a common peril, for example, a contingency which may cause a loss, such as fire, typhoon, earthquake, etc., contribute into a common fund out of which those who suffer loss or damage from such peril are indemnified. Ito po yung tinatawag natin risk sharing. Okay? Oh, let me give another example. Lahat po tayo dito na nag attend ng seminar na to, webinar na to. Uh, we all face the risk of meeting an accident out in the streets. Right? So what do we do? Lahat po tayo magkaambag-ambagan. Siguro mga 10 pesos each. If we're 100 in this webinar, 10 pesos times 100, mahina po ako sa mat. Magkano po yun? <laughs> anyway, yun po ang tinatawag na common fund. Kung may isa sa atin na naaksidente, hindi naman siguro lahat tayo na 100 na katen dito, maaksidente po, no? So, may pangilan nila. Okay? The, the law of probability, etc. So what happens is, itong common fund na doon, doon kukuni naman yung amount na pangdamot doon sa naaksidente or nasunugan or naundoy. Okay? So now you just use your imagination and think about everybody in the country now contributing their premiums into this common fund. So if somebody suffers a loss like uh, earthquake damage or a uh, fire to his house or business or whatever, then this is where the insurance company gets the amount to pay or indemnify that person who suffered the damage or a loss. Okay? So again, it's a device under which a group of people who face a common peril contribute into a common fund out of which those who suffer loss or damage are indemnified. Okay, I na naman. What's wrong with this?
Wait, let me stop sharing and I'll. Okay, so that's risk sharing. Okay, the other definition is what we call the legal definition. Okay, insurance is a contract whereby one party for a consideration agrees to indemnify the other against loss, damage, or liability arising out of an unknown or contingent event. Okay, so contrata puto, no? So that means it's a legal agreement. There are two parties to that agreement. You have the insurer or the ones that take on the risk, and you have the insured, the clients, the one who purchases the insurance policy. So may sinasabi dito for a, for a consideration, okay? Ano naman yung consideration na yun? Ito po yung premium na binabayaran po ng insured para tanggapin yung kanyang risk. Para hindi na siya yung mag-alala kung siya ang nasunugan or whatever. Okay? And what is the promise? Ano yung kapalit nung consideration or nung premium? To indemnify. And to indemnify means to shoulder the expense of the insured against loss, damage, or and or liability. So, ito po yung kinocover ng insurance, no? Against loss, damage, or the liability of the insured. Okay, so those are the three things that we can insure. Now, before I go on to the principles of insurance, baka may mga tanong muna kayo doon sa pinagdaanan nating uh, topics. I hope it's as clear as mud. <laughs> it's very clear. Actually, sir, we're trying to absorb everything. Nakakatuwa. Sorry. Na. <laughs> Salamat. I might be speaking very fast, huh? Okay, no, no, so no, no. maybe we can save the questions for later. Kung wala ngayon, yes, uh, let's talk about the principles of insurance. Or what is it that we have to understand that makes insurance possible or work? Okay. There are several. The first very important principle is the principle of insurable interest. Okay, the principal insurable interest means the legal right to insure or the legal relationship of the owner to that property that he wants to insure. Now, how do we test that? How do we know that a person has insurable interest over a property? A person has insurable interest if he stands to gain if the subject matter of insurance is preserved or if he stands to suffer a loss, if it's damage or loss. For example, si John, may kotse. Okay? So, punta ako ngayon sa insurance company ko. Gusto ko pong ipa-insure yung kotse ni John. Tatanggapin ba yun? Hindi. Bakit? I do not have any legal right to insure the car of John because I don't own it. If something happens to his car, sino ang mapepermisyo? Si John, hindi ako. Okay? Sino ang makakabi... Who has to buy another car if it's destroyed? Si John, hindi ako. So si John lang ang pwedeng magpa-insure ng kotse niya. Kasi siya ang may may-ari ng kotse niya, siya ang may legal relationship to the property. So it could be a car, it could be your business, it could be um, your factory, it could be your house, it could be property that you own. Okay? So that's insurable interest. That's why, uh, you know, 
sa insurance industry may mga tanong diyan eh. Yung property naka-insure sa parents. Eh namatay na si parents. Yung mga anak ngayon ang nataano ng the claim. So, may problema 'yon kasi the, the property hasn't been transferred yet to the children. All right? The property technically still belongs to the parents and then maybe now since namatay, the estate. So, hindi pa napapaghati-hatian. So, si insurance company will have to be careful kasi if he pays na say, si panganay, baka magreklamo naman si na bunso. Ba't yung binigay sa kuya ko? Eh, may may-ari rin ako niya. May, see, so, it becomes a legal issue. That's why sometimes insurance companies are very careful in paying claims. Uh, these things have to be sorted out. So, insurable interest, very important. Next, principles of insurance. Next is the principle of utmost good faith. I like this one. Um, you know, the all contracts, whether it's a lab labor uh, employment contract, sales contract, uh, lease contract, even a marriage contract. All these are considered uh, in good faith. All right? However, insurance goes one step more than this. When we talk about insurance contracts, dapat dito at most good faith. Uberi may fide in Latin. Okay? At most good faith, what does that mean? Okay? The insured and insurer must negotiate all insurance contracts with complete honesty and full disclosure of important material facts. Full disclosure po. Sa marriage contract, pwede ka pa magtago eh. Pero sa insurance contract, full disclosure of all material facts. Sorry, let's going back to that. Um, why do we need this? Why do we need utmost good faith. First of all, the insurance company knows nothing about the property that you want to insure, right? It takes your word for it. You fill in a form, you put everything there in the form, and you sign it. Okay, then the insurance company usually, um, they take that as gospel truth, and they assess the risk based on what you say. All right? On your side, naman, if you are the insured, you don't even understand what the policy is all about because the policy was not created with you. It's created by the insurance company. You just merely adhere to it. It's a contract of adhesion. Attorney Darren, I see that you're here. Baka you want to help me out. Huh? <laughs> Attorney Darren is the president of Coco Gen. I don't know why he's attending this. But thanks for the support, Attorney and if you want to help me with this, go ahead, please. Uh, Attorney Darren is, uh, well, he's not only the president of Bob but Jen, he's also a lawyer. So <laughs> he knows this like the back of his hand. Anyway, so uh, going back to good faith, this is one of the principles of insurance that is usually neglected. And it becomes a bone of contention when there, there is a claim. But again, there should be full disclosure of all important material facts. Now, you might ask, ano ba ibig sabihin ng material facts? Material means anything that can change the mind of an underwriter whether or not to accept the risk. And if it is acceptable, at what premium rate? Is he going to give that protection? So that is what material means. So let me give an example. You want to insure your car. The color of your car is red. Is that material? I don't think so. But if you say that the car is going to be used for business purposes, it means that it's going to bring you to work, etc., or bring the kids to school, then that is material. But the color is not material. All right? 
uh, where you park your car may be material. So uh, the size of the car may be material, but in color is not a material thing. Okay, other principles. The principle of indemnity. Ah, very important. Kanina nyo pa naririnig yung word ng indemnity. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? To be indemnified means that the insured is to be restored to the same financial position that he was in before the loss occurred. So sa insurance kasi kung ano ang nawala sa inyo, yun rin ang ibabalik. Walang labis, walang kulang. And again, this is another area where people don't understand. For example, if you have a house worth 1 million, just to make it simple, wala nang bahay na 1 million ngayon, but just to make it simple, if you have a house worth 1 million, and then it's completely lost, then you will get paid 1 million. Okay, just in simple uh, illustration. Okay? Now, you'll say, eh, teka muna, my house, well, I, I want to build better, etc., etc. I, I can't build a house for one million anymore. Well, that's why every, you always have the chance naman to, to uh, upgrade your coverage because a coverage in non-life insurance is good for one year. So you get to review the value of your house every year. And if you made additions or improvements, etc., you can always add this. So maybe it was 1 million when it started, but now it's 1.5. Okay, so you have to update that. You have to review. Okay, another example is, if you have a 10-year-old car, nabangga uh, siya or total loss, by law and how it works and all that, the insurance company is supposed to pay you back the value of a 10-year-old car. Or in, in the policy, it says it can replace. Okay, So when it replaces your car, it's not going to give you a brand new car. It's going to give you a 10-year-old car. I said that's what you have of the same make and model, etc. As, as close as humanly possible. Now, indemnity is very difficult, all right? That's why if you listen to what the insurance commissioner said earlier, uh, to indemnify, what he means there is that something is returned to you as close to what was agreed. Okay, okay. It's never possible to be exact that's why indemnity, if it's indemnity-based, it can take months or hindi naman years. Siguro sinabi ni Commissioner kanina, years. Uh, I don't think so. But yes, it takes some time to arrive at that amount because both sides would have to agree to it. All right? That's why it's important. Uh, that's why he was talking about parametric products, which we'll learn about on Monday, and how different that is from the normal indemnity-based insurance. But that's a topic for Monday. Okay? So again, the principle of indemnity is to be indemnified. That means it's to be restored to the same financial position that the insured was in immediately prior to the loss. Okay? Now, in case of loss, insured shall be compensated up to the extent of the loss and should never be more than fully indemnified. There are different methods of indemnity. The most common is a monetary payment. It pays for the cash equivalent of the property lost or damaged. The second is reinstatement. That means repairing a damaged article to approximate its former state or the restoration to the original state as far as humanly possible or replace. You replace the lost article or property with similar property. But the most common here would be the monetary payment. Now, you might be asking, who chooses the method of indemnity? Usually, it is the insured company who chooses. 
Okay? Now, the principle of insurance is a principle of contribution. For example, there's more than one insurer covering the same property with the same peril. So, the law insurance company, ang mangyayari dyan, co-insurance. Okay? Each company gets 50% of the premium if there are two companies. And if there's a loss, then they rateably share the loss. Each pays 50% of the loss. So that is what we call co-insurance. That is allowed. Ang hindi ho pwede or not allowed or illegal is what we call double insurance. Where you have several insurers, you're covering it all for 100%. And then if there is a loss, the insurer now co uh, collects against each insurance company 100%. Hindi mo pwede to because if you look at it, it goes against the principle of indemnity. Because nobody is supposed to profit out of insurance. Kung ano, ano lang po yung nawala, yun lang po yung isiswate. Okay? So in other words, there should be a rateable payment to the loss or damage. Okay, another principle is a principle of subrogation. Now, what, what is this? For example, the insurance company already paid for a loss. No? The rights of recovery that the original insured had now transfers to the insurance company. Let me illustrate. For example, uh, si Vice Admiral, banda ng kotse niya, no? Nabanga, sorry, actual example lang po yun. Uh, now, Vice Admiral Palma then went to his insurance company and said, hey, wait, uh, I had an accident. Uh, you have to pay for my car. So the insurance company now pays for the car. E ngayon, yung nakabanga kay Vice Admiral Palma, sana originally, Vice Admiral Alex could have the, um, collected against the party who bumped him. But since binayaran na siya ng insurance company, yung right ni Vice Admiral Alex na pangulit na doon sa nakabangga sa kanya ay nailipat naman ngayon sa insured. Ay, sa insurance company. Because the insurance company already paid Vice Admiral Pam. So the recovery rights of the insured to a third party or wrongdoer is transferred to the insurance company. It's a substitution of the insurer in the place of the insured to recover losses suffered by the insured. Again, the supporting principle for that would be indemnity. Because Vice Admiral Alex is not supposed to profit and um, you know, claim twice, once from his insurance company and again from the person who bumped him. Okay? Another would be the principle of proximate cause. Ayan, importante po yan kasi yung proximate cause po, dapat yun yung ini-insure natin against. Dapat yun na nangyari. If it's fire that we're talking about, the proximate cause should have been fire. Alright? So it is the direct cause of the loss or the immediate cause of the loss or the real cause of the loss. So, sa insurance policies naman po, nakalista po yung mga perils dyan. So, dapat yun po yung cost ng loss. Alright, so there are other uses of insurance. If you're insured, it facilitates corporate or personal planning by reducing variables. Kasi alam niyo naman po na mababayaran kayo, you don't have to worry about that. See, so you can always factor that in into your business uh, you know, planning and all that. Okay. Also, um, it facilitates financial transactions. For example, you want to borrow money from a bank and you put in collateral. The collateral could be real estate or the collateral could be the car itself if you want to finance the car. And if you do that, um, the financing institution always wants that subject matter, the collateral insured. So if you're insured there, then it facilitates the release of the loan. And it also provides a methodical way of providing for losses. Pardon my dogs. Okay, so 
that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. I hope I kept it in my time slot. It's actually perfect, sir. Uh, and <laughs> more importantly, more importantly, the 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 thought, uh, the concept is very well encapsulated with the discussion. So thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Mitch, I know it's a little bit of payday, but I'm not going <laughs> Actually po, naglilista na nga ako kanina. Ano pa nga ba yung hindi ko insured? <laughs> yes, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, may questions po kayo. I'll be very happy to answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And again, thank you very much. That's, an, that's a very insightful presentation. And uh, as Sir Mitch was saying, the next part of our program will give room for everyone to post questions and interact with Sir Mitch. Now, to give everyone time to compose your questions para meron kayong kaunting uh, saglit para makapagsulat ng question nyo and input it in the chat box here, uh, we will have you watch this short video to recap some of the important points mentioned by Sir Mitch. Filipinos live in a beautiful country. Yet, this beautiful country is filled with dangers. Dangers of typhoons, dangers of flooding, dangers of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So what should be their answer to these dangers? You're right, insurance. But why is that very few Filipinos are insured? The Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, or PIRA, is the one that promotes insurance to Filipinos. PIRA is about insurance for cars, for houses, and for accidents. It is also about insurance for ships and airplanes, trains, and a lot more. These are all considered non-life insurance. The Philippine economy will not move if there is no non-life insurance. PIRA wants the non-life insurance industry to be more united, stronger, and influential. PIRA speaks for the industry through the media. PIRA represents the industry in talking with government. And PIRA goes out to educate Filipinos, both young and old, about the importance of non-life insurance. PIRA cannot stop typhoons. PIRA cannot stop floodings. PIRA cannot stop earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. But it can make sure you have an insurance to cling on to when these worst events happen. PIRA will always be there for you. All right. Uh, at this point, uh, we will open the floor now for your questions and interactions with our uh, guest speaker. You can type in your questions in the Zoom box. Uh, you can make a chat, compose your question, just type it in. And uh, before we read some of the questions, I just want to acknowledge all our participants here in this uh, live streaming. You know, uh, from a while ago, I just saw participants all the way from Ormoc. So, kumusta po kayo dyan? Uh, nakakatuwa po at uh, we are connected all the way to the Visayas region. No, welcome po and we're very glad you uh, are connected with us today. No? Yun, uh, Sir Mitch, ang kagandahan ng doing things online. No? Sometimes these things will not be possible doing it face-to-face -face because you have to transport everybody and sabi nga ni Sir Mitch, risk na naman yun. No? Uh, but with an online facility like this, no, we can connect everyone from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Again, welcome po sa inyong lahat. You can type again your uh, questions or your uh, clarifications, thoughts. No, if you have any thoughts, you can type in in our Zoom chat box, and we will read it for you. No? And uh, just uh, continue composing it. Uh, don't mind if it's in English or Tagalog. Ang importante po ay magkaintindihan tayo ngayong umaga, kasi sabi nga ng uh, Sir Alex Pamakanina, we want everyone to maximize the engagement today. We want you to take home yung mga insight po about insurance and reinsurance. Now, if I may, uh, Sir Mitch, are you game na po? Uh, kayo game, po kayo game. ready na to interact? Kasi gusto po talaga namin sulitin yung presence nyo. No? 
uh, I just want to uh, pitch in one of the questions po na nakolekta natin earlier today. Ang sabi po dun sa question, our business is just starting to open up in this concept. Kasi by the way po, Sir Mitch, uh, most of our uh, participants today are from the small and medium-sized enterprises. No? So siguro, I think yun yung background niya. Our business is just starting to open up to this concept. What is your advice? Uh, ano po ba yung simplest risk identification assessment, identification or assessment na pwede namin gawin as a small or medium-sized enterprise? Uh, siguro ang magandang gawin dito is find out kung ano yung risk na the most pervasive to you. Uh, is it the risk of flooding? Is it the risk of fire? Kung mangyari po yung risk na yun, eh medyo mahihirapan po kayong tumayo ulit. So yun pong isipin natin, ma-prioritize po tayo. Ngayon, having said that naman, uh, for SMEs, um, a lot of insurance companies na members ng PIRA, meron sila mga package insurance. Kasi kung malalaki kayong corporates, kayang-kayang yung bumili ng isang insurance policy for each risk that you're facing. no? Pero kagaya ng, uh, well I think Darren, uh, President Darren is here for Coco Gen. Meron sila mga package programs na kung saan nandun na lahat ng kailangan ng isang SME. Yung dating company na I, I ran, Fortune for example, had a business care package. That's what we called it. Nandun na, meron na doon siyang fire, meron na doon siyang liability, uh, meron rin para sa mga employees. So, imbis na limang policy ang bibilin mo, lahat ng coverage nandun na po sa isa. Ay, okay. ang ganda po. Ang ganda. And then meron po for, palang mga ganun. No? Meron, meron po, meron po. Tingin lang po kayo, uh, just talk to insurance companies and they can help you. Or they can create one for you. Uh, another is for SMEs, uh, alam niyo naman po, over the years, uh, may nag-evolve na micro-insurance. Walang iniwan ho yan sa, pupunta ko kayo sa SNR o sa Landers, bibili kayo bulto-bulto, shampoo, di ba? Dalawang litro, waspura. Pero, kung pupunta yung sari-sari store, mga nakasashay. Sa insurance, meron na rin po yan. Kung ano ang kailangan nyo, mga sashay packages, maybe it's not going to pay for the entire loss, but it will help SMEs, especially yung micro, to help, makakapantawid lang po, you know what I mean? Okay. And that's important. So, there are also products that we call micro-insurance products. It's not the big indemnity base where it's going to pay for all your losses, but it will pay you an amount that will help tide you over or make you pick up the pieces. So to ang ganda, ang ganda. And, that's, and I think uh, that's very helpful, uh, Sir Mitch, no? kasi uh, we, we know small and medium-sized enterprises don't have that much capital. No? They don't have that much money to spend on a lot of things. Kaya, and, and it's very encouraging, by the way, that the insurance industry is actually progressive in thinking about these things. No? So, gusto ko pong pulutin lang, I just want to pick up on an important point na binanggit ng Sir Mitch kanina. You know, uh, dear participants, what's important, makikonect lang sa mga insurance company, talk to them. Talk to them. Uh, minsan kasi, uh, ano nga ba yung sabi nga po ng commercial? wag maihiyang magtanong. Minsan kasi may hiya, eh, may hesitation to talk to insurance companies. Whereas it's practically uh, normal and it's practical. Uh, basically, it's practical. It's a need, a necessity for everyone. Uh, Sir Mitch, if I may jump in, no, may magandang mga pitch in na question dito sa chat box. Mukhang yes, na-curious po dun sa binanggit nyo kanina. Kasi paano nga daw po if wala na yung owner without having the chance to process the inheritance sa anak. Yung parang binanggit nyo kanina na scenario, no? the, the, the indemnity uh, is uh, placed on the parent, eh kaso namatay nga yung parent as you were saying, tapos hindi na ilipat sa anak. Ano, paano nga raw po yung scenario na yun? Well, what usually the insurance company does in situations like that is we pay the claim to the estate of the deceased. 
And mm. then, mahala na po si Court mag-ata-ata doon, doon sa lahat ng heirs. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, and and uh, ang, ang kagandahan nun, I, what I'm getting is, even in that kind of scenario, there's a process to handle that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Of course. Oh, sir, a question. Yes, yes. Now, sir, there's a question here from uh, Mariana Vargas uh, from OML Center. Uh, the PH insurance industry already uses global climate change projections or they are starting to look at climate change projections for its risk identification and evaluation processes. No? So right. parang sinasabi niya, ginagawa na yun. That's and, right. That's uh, right. And uh, if so, or if not, how are insurance currently evaluating climate change impacts or risk? Okay. I'm glad that question was asked because right now the insurance industry is in the process of reviewing our rates because with climate change and the worsening uh, scenario, uh, there are scientific models that are available in the uh, insurance and reinsurance world, no? where we can plug in our experience into these models and find out with a bit amount of, insert, of certainty kung ano magiging labas. So we are already using those models and we are now in the process of adjusting the rates to be a little more granular. Dati kasi one rate for the entire country. But you know, there are certain parts of the country that are more prone to certain risks. For example, if we're talking about typhoons, it's the eastern seaboard. Okay, uh, From the north down to Mindanao, the eastern seaboard are the ones that get hit with the brunt of typhoons, diba? And as it crosses land, humihina po to. Okay? Apo. So, obviously, the high-risk areas are the ones that are supposed to be supposedly paying more. Eh, that is isang rate for the whole country. Kawawa naman yung hindi tinatama ng typhoon, they're paying the same amount. Oh, so, okay. it's not it's not in place yet, but we are already, with the help of the Insurance Commission, working on that. Another is earthquakes. Do you know that the most earthquake prone tayo, no? But if you look at the whole Philippines, halos lahat yan pula. Pero there are different shades of red. All right? Uh, believe it or not, in a webinar that we just finished, I think a couple of days ago, the most earthquake prone would be the Davao area. Oh, really? Followed by Cebu, huli pa nga ang Manila, despite our having the West Valley Fault. Ah, All right? Right. See, so the most safe for earthquakes would be Puerto Princesa or El Nido, Palawan. Ah, okay. See, so again, for earthquake, we have one rate for the whole country, but now with more granular information, we can adjust the rates accordingly. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, process again, pa lang po yan, hindi pa po nangyayari. But yes, yes. doon po tayo patungo. Yeah. But still, sir, that's very encouraging. No? Kasi nga, uh, what I'm getting here from the insurance industry is that the insurance industry is very progressive, most especially on customizing to the real need of the people. Yes, sir. That's yes, very caring. That's, eh, hindi lang siya very progressive, very caring naman yun para sa industry. Well, uh, we, we salute well, Pira for that. The uh, insurance industry now has young people in it with no ideas and we have a very supportive regulator. As a matter of fact, he already mentioned, he, he mentioned that the industry and the insurance commission are working together to come up with something that's going to benefit the insuring public. Uh -oh. Dati po, ang tingin namin sa regulator, nako, regulator yan, huwag tayo makialam dyan. Ngayon po, uh, may collaboration. Yeah. May collaboration, yeah. Uh -huh. Sir, jumping forward, no, uh, meron lang, bago ko, may nag-feed pa kasi ng mga question, bago maiwan ito, may question po directly, uh, directed to the Secretariat, ang tanong niya ay, what is the average percent of the property value being charged by insurance companies? I guess this is in terms of premiums. Okay. Iba-iba po yung rate natin. No? Uh, ang pinagbabasihan po ng rate would be kung saan kayo. Uh, and first of all, uh, the factors of underwriting na po ito. 
um, what what are you insuring? If you're insuring your house or your your building, is it used as a house? Is it used as a factory? Is it used as an office? Etc. Is it used as a warehouse? Or is it used as something else? A mall, a store, a karini. May mga iba-ibang rates po yan. Kasi iba-ibang risk. Ngayon, uh, maliban doon, ang titinan rin, ano yung construction ng building na yun? Kahoy ba siya? Bakal ba siya? Uh, reinforced concrete ba siya? Etc. So again, may different factors po yun. Tapos, yung location. Nasa congested area ba siya? O nasa subdivision na walang katabi? Etc. Or, katabi man ng fault line yan? O hindi? At yan, yeah. marami yung tinitingnan. So, lahat po yan in the future. Uh -oh. <laughs> nasa tabi ba siya ng vulkan? Uh, yes. Yeah, Iwa ka dun po. Iba-iba uh, nga naman kasi ang uh, uses and classification ng property. That's right, sir. sir so, uses nice of the property, classification of the construction, um, so many other factors. Yan po yung tinatawag na underwriting factors. Opo. Sir, may magandang uh, input here from the chat box from Sir Alan Moscoso. Uh, and I think this is more of a comment na baka magandang i-share nyo rin yung thoughts niya. Sabi niya, the, there's insurance hesitation due to some bad experiences with other insurers. Hindi naman lahat, parang sinasabi niyang gano'n. No? Uh, uh, from your part, uh, Sapira, uh, how are you addressing this? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? And how are you moving forward? Parang ganun po yung tanong niya. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned this, no? Um, kasi, if you're going to look at the industries that are being regulated by the Insurance Commission, hindi insurance po lahat yun. Okay? Ang insurance po, uh, life at non-life, kami po, meron kami may tinatawag na reserves, tapos yung... Uh, yung tingin or regulation sa financials namin mahigpit. Alright? May minimum net worth requirement kami. Meron pa kaming reinsurance. Reinsurance is nothing more than insurance on insurance. So yung tinetake ng mga insurance companies na risks, yan po naka-reinsure rin yan to make sure that we're able to pay for all the losses. Okay? So I'll have you know that the insurance industry uh, among the ASEAN countries, the Philippines has the highest uh, net worth requirements. On top of that, uh, we are also regulated on the basis of the risk-based capitalization. Kung saan ang capital po ng insurance company ay base po sa risk na it takes on. See? So dalawa-dalawa yan, they're both very strict. And then, I have you know also that in a couple of years, we're going to be adopting IFRS 17, which is a very transparent way of looking at the financials of an insurance company. And it's going to be made public. All right. I'll have you know also that the Insurance Commission uh, reviews the financial standing and the uh, operations of insurance company on an annual basis. So... Ren ang renewal po ng lisensya ng insurance company e eh annual. Kung meron ho siyang ginawang hindi maganda, pwede next year hindi ma-renew yung, eh, yung lisensya niya. Now, having said that, I also mentioned that there are other industries that are under the regulatory ambit of the IC. And these include HMOs, these include pre-need, and usually... It's those companies in the past, historically, who had issues, pre-need at saka HMO. Hindi po kami yun. But since the public don't understand that, because since all of us are under the regulatory ambit of the IC, they lump us together. Okay? So it's not really the insurance industry, life or non-life, with the problem. And I already gave you... Uh, Examples of how strictly we are regulated by the Insurance Commission. Ngayon yes, po, uh, having said that, the Insurance Commission is slowly putting standards into the other industries. Kasi recently lang naman ho nalipat yan sa, sa regulation ng IC. Yeah. 
Th- thank you, Sir Mitch. Uh, actually, that's another take home even for me. No, yung iba-iba pa lang classification yun. No? Uh, they were just lumped together. Yes, uh, there's yes. an impression for everyone na insurance. Ah, insurance lahat yan. Iba pa lang <laughs> pre-made, iba pa lang HMO. Wow, that, that's a really yes. good take home. No? Uh, by the way, one of those questions a while ago was fielded by uh, Miss Simonette Lat, whom we want to recognize. He is also here. No? And, uh, by, uh, hello po, magandang umaga po sa inyo. By the way, sir, na mention natin kanina, the president of Coco Gem is here. Maybe he wants to add something. Yes, um, Attorney Darren, you want to say hi, please? Yeah. Uh, and while he's connecting, hi, good again, I yeah, want to just acknowledge. Want to say hi. Oh yes, 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 Sir Darren, thank you, thank you. umaga po. Yeah, thank, Sorry thank for, you for uh, mentioning me, Sir Mitch. Huh? <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot. I'm surprised to see you here, though. <laughs> uh, well, no, I, I heard, I heard that Vice Admiral Pama would be here, so I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Oh, Thank you oh, for joining oh, us. Thank you for joining us, President Darren. Oh, oh. Ang Sir Alex po ay laging nasa unahan natin. <laughs> oh, oh. And uh, I w- I'm about to also give some space for Sir Alex. Baka po may gusto kayong idagdag. At uh, habang iniisip nyo po yan, gusto ko lang isingit muli. Uh, I want to acknowledge all our participants here. We're connected all the way to uh, Visayas. And I just saw in the chat box, meron daw po tayong kasama from Zamboanga. So talagang represented tayo, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Thank you for joining us this morning and we really hope you're taking a lot from this discussion. Sir Alex, would you like to add something to the discussions po? No, no, no. Let's give chance to our, to, to our friends. And uh, although may, may, may nilagay ko dyan sa chat box eh, for uh, Sir Mitch, uh, it's more of a personal than ano. Uh, I, I, I have a question sa chat box. No, no, it's in the chat box already. I, I, I was just asking Sir Mitch you know, if, if there are offers for discounts or incentives in payments for disaster mitigation measures. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, Vice Admiral. Kasi po, the way the insurance industry looks at that is that nakakabawas po sa risk yung mga mitigation efforts na yan. Yes. So obviously, the risk becomes smaller then the price that you pay for the risk transfer becomes smaller as well. Yeah, I, I, so I yes, we take that into consideration, Bob. Yeah, I, I, I needed to ask that question for the benefit of you mga participants natin who are basically the small and medium enterprises nga. And, and, and the premium payments are basically an issue to some, no? And, and, yes. and um, uh, for the inform- their information, mabuti na yung galing po sa inyo, uh, the authority on this, na there is indeed an incentive, no? And it's encouragement to us to, to put in para mga, you have to cite that. Like for example, if you're going to insure yung kanilang mga um, factory, uh, or hindi naman factory kasi small nga eh, yung kanilang mga cottage uh, workshops na malapit sa, for example, sa mga ilog. If they have, if you have some mitigation measures, and uh, you can always cite that sa, sa inyong mga insurers and say, hey, uh, pwede bang makunda ng discounts to? Because sabi ng PIRA, Eh, this can be considered as a, a, a parang uh, premium discount, and that 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 would be a very very big uh, incentive to our small and medium enterprises. That's why we're pushing the envelope on that. And and, and thank you very much. That uh, no less than um, uh, uh, Sir Mitch is saying that na talagang meron. So kulitin na po natin yung mga insurers natin sa bagay na yan. Salamat, yes. salamat. Yes, sir. Kasi po uh, insurance companies usually send inspectors. Yeah. And point it out to those inspectors para ma-note nila sa mga reports nila at ma-take into consideration ng mga underwriters ng mga companies. Siyempre, ho, pag hindi naman ho, pinapakita or uh, na-demonstrate, eh, hindi ho malalaman ng insurance companies. Hindi mara-rate accordingly. Mm-hmm. And that goes yes. with the principle of uh, faithfulness. Uh, most good faith, yes, that's uh, most right. Most good faith. Uh, nakikinig ako, sir. Ha? Kita niyo. Oh, 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 <laughs> I was about very to, may, uh, I'm trying to recall the Latin term. Eh. Yun na lang very very may, may, may. Most good faith. <laughs> well, uh, we, we want to entertain more questions. So if you still have some questions, you can still post it. At uh, yun nga po, no, I just want to pick up also from the thoughts of Sir Alex, because when we're talking about disaster resilience, 
we have to look at it in a very comprehensive way no yung pangkabuuan and no one is exempted uh, i don't know if it's if that's a sad note or a happy note but disaster resilience is everyone's concern most especially sa private sector because as Sir Mitch was saying, we have more to lose. If we're operating a business, if we're operating an enterprise, kailangan po talaga. May tanong si Arnie from Arise. Uh, how to verify the policy being offered to you saan daw lalapit if in doubt? Uh, if you're in doubt, please, um, the insurance uh, commission has a website and nakasulat po doon lahat ng uh, licensed insurance companies or bona fide insurance company. So, punta lang po kayo doon or you can always call them. Uh, I think their website is www.ins.gov. Ins.gov. Okay. So, ang sinasabi ng Sir Mitch, if you want to check the validity of the insurance company you are share, say, ano, uh, connecting with, check it on the official website which is ins.gov. Uh, Malu, please correct me if I'm wrong, huh? but I think that's the website. Saka, I think the idea here, Sir Mitch, is that uh, insurance company has a, ano, no, a public disclosure. Na, ano kami, we, are, we are legit. No? We are oh, official. Yes. Oh, yes. So, oh, yeah. Of course. Kaya, if you are in doubt, no, mga participants, if you are in doubt, definitely you can check. It. Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, I hope you can see it in our ch chat box, uh, but let me just read it. It says HTTPS uh, colon uh, backslash www.insurance, no? the whole word insurance.gov.ph. Nandiyan po yung impormasyon ng lahat ng mga uh, legitimate no, na insurance companies natin. Uh, uh, primarily, sir, actually, I'm very encouraged kasi what, uh, in terms of feeling, no, uh, in ter kanina sa knowledge, puno na ako eh. But you know what, how I feel right now? I feel assured. I feel assured na the, the insurance industry is really reaching out no, in, a, in their most sincere, caring way. Dahil nga naniniwala yung industriya na hindi lang ito para sa kumpanya o kaya para sa mga mayayaman. No, insurance, no, passing the risk, as we were talking about, it can be uh, accessed by everyone. No? And in that yes, way, sir. I feel assured, nakaka-assure po yun. Salamat, salamat. Okay. Sir Mitch, I would like to give the last uh, word para po sa inyo. Any last word that you would like to leave our participants for today? Well, I hope you did learn uh, even a bit about insurance and risk management. Uh, Monday is going to be a little more high level. Uh, we're going to be talking about some initiatives that the industry is doing to address uh, being resilient and all that. And if you do have any questions about insurance, please feel free to uh, contact me at Pira. Uh, my email address, I'll put it in the chat box. So if you have any questions, please feel free. I'll take time to answer this. And if there's anything that you need from Pira, let us know rin po. If you want us to do this in your offices, etc., sige po, we'll make ourselves available so that we can spread the gospel of uh, being resilient and insurance conscious. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, speaking of Monday, no, speaking of Monday, this actually concludes our session for today. No? on Insurance for Resilience webinar series. Because uh, speaking of Monday, as I was saying, this is a two-day webinar. So if you are really uh, engaged at marami kayong nakuha sa ating mga usapin ngayon, then you should be here on Monday. No? Uh, we hope that you have made use of all the information that you have heard today in order to prepare your businesses for possible future risk. Kasi lahat naman tayo may risk such as what we have been experiencing nowadays, sadly. The ultimate goal of this session is to ensure the sustainability of all, especially the SMEs, no? because they are more vulnerable to both natural and man-made threats. So next week, no? next week, dear participants, do join us again next week, Monday, 10 a.m. 
same time po, same, same time. As we talk about the exciting new initiatives of the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association in session 2. So dalawang session po ito. Kung marami kayong napulot ngayon, you will learn more this Monday. No? And we will highlight on that day catastrophe risk and parametric products. Oh, very interesting. Before you go, before everyone logs out, please help us improve our processes by accomplishing our feedback form. Please go to the link in the screen you are seeing right now. In the chat box, you will also find the link there or scan the QR code no? that is flashed on your screen right now. We will be sending out the presentation materials to everyone. Yeah, no. So everyone will have a file of the presentation materials shared by Sir Mitch to your email addresses. So do not forget to fill out the attendance form. So we will get your contact details. Yeah. Thank you again to our speaker, Sir Mitch Reliosa from PIRA. And thank you for the leadership and support, Sir Alex. Again, our deep appreciation to Commissioner Dennis Funa. And uh, with that note, Good day, everybody, and enjoy the rest of this beautiful Friday. For those of you who would like to know more about Arise Philippines, our activities, our upcoming events, marami po yan, hindi lang ito. You may also reach out to Arise Philippines Secretariat. You can look now at the screen because you will find our uh, social media pages, our online links, so it will be more convenient for you to connect with us. Again, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Marami pong salamat sa bawat isa. Enjoy this weekend. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you very much, Mitch. Thank you, Vice Admiral. Ingat po. See you. See you Monday. Thank you very much, Thank John. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you to our colleagues, Vice and Piva. Salamat mm -hmm. Filipinos live in a beautiful country. Yet, this beautiful country is filled with dangers. Dangers of typhoons, dangers of flooding, dangers of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So what should be their answer to these dangers? You're right, insurance. But why is that very few Filipinos are insured? The Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, or PIRA, is the one that promotes insurance to Filipinos. PIRA is about insurance for cars, for houses, and for accidents. It is also about insurance for ships and airplanes, trains, and a lot more. These are all considered non-life insurance. The Philippine economy will not move if there is no non-life insurance. PIRA wants the non-life insurance industry to be more united, stronger, and influential. PIRA speaks for the industry through the media. PIRA represents the industry in talking with government, and PIRA goes out to educate Filipinos, both young and old, about the importance of non-life insurance. PIRA cannot stop typhoons. PIRA cannot stop floodings. PIRA cannot stop earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. But it can make sure you have an insurance to cling on to when these worst events happen. PIRA will always be there for you. Imagine a better, more resilient world, where nations can bounce forward from disasters. Critical infrastructures stand firm against calamities, where businesses and communities can thrive. And basic services are uninterrupted, especially when they need them most. This could be our future. If we start working together on disaster risk reduction now. The United Nations adopted the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction in 2015, a bold but brave movement to build resilience in every nation across the globe by minimizing known risks and preventing the creation of new risks. To strengthen pre-disaster risk reduction and pre-disaster preparedness to build capacity among communities towards recovery and to save lives and protect businesses and investments. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction has seven global targets.
To substantially reduce global disaster mortality and number of people affected globally by 2030. Reduce direct disaster economic loss in relation to global gross domestic product and reduce disaster damage to critical infrastructure and disruption of basic services. Substantially increase the number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by 2020 and enhance international cooperation to developing countries through adequate and sustainable support to complement their national actions for implementation of the framework and substantially increase the availability of and access to multi-hazard early warning systems and disaster risk information and assessments to the people by 2030. To help achieve the targets of the Sendai Framework, the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction set up Arise Global, an international network of private sector volunteers committing support to the cause. Part of this global network is Arise Philippines. Established in 2015, its membership network of companies and private institutions has grown. Focused on the four priorities for action of the Sendai Framework, namely, 1. Understanding disaster risk 2. Strengthening disaster risk governance to manage disaster risk 3. Investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience and 4. Enhancing disaster preparedness for effective response and to build back better in recovery, rehabilitation and reconstruction. The members of Arise Philippines continue to work together towards a shared vision of a more resilient Philippines. Through awareness building, mutual cooperation, and action, Arise aims to contribute to building stable businesses, sustainable communities, and safe and resilient Filipino families. Through continuous action and collaboration with the government and the public, this vision can finally become a reality. Helping communities and businesses bounce forward better for a more resilient Philippines. There's still a lot of work to be done. We will live up to our mandate by undertaking activities under our work themes and priority areas. And with your help, we can go further and build better. Be part of the network. Let us co-create a sustainable and resilient future for all of us. Muli po, magandang araw at magkita-kita tayo sa lunes ng alas 10 ng umaga.